On July 3, 2023, China's Ministry of Commerce and General Administration of Customs issued an announcement, in order to safeguard national security and interests, with the approval of the State Council, it is decided to implement export control on gallium and germanium-related items. The announcement not only makes restrictions on two materials, gallium and germanium, but also makes restrictions on gallium nitride, gallium arsenide, germanium epitaxial growth substrates, germanium tetrachloride and other semiconductor materials containing gallium and germanium elements together. China is the world's largest producer of gallium and germanium, with the world's largest reserves of gallium metal, accounting for about 80% tilde 85% of the total reserves, data, Institute of Mineral. Resources, Chinese Academy of Geological Sciences, China's germanium reserves account for 41% of the global total reserves, second only to the 45% of the United States. It can be said that these two key metals are the killer applications for China beyond rare earths. Just a month ago, our channel also shared information about China's announcement of a security review of Micron, the largest U.S. semiconductor memory company. Now at this point in time, it is easy to think that this is the latest move by China to push back against the US semiconductor restrictions. The game between China and the US in the semiconductor sector is moving from one-way sanctions to a deeper stage of back-and-forth play. So the question arises, why should export controls be imposed on these two metals? What exactly are gallium and germanium used for? Is restricting the export of gallium and germanium really a countermeasure to the US sanctions against China in the semiconductor sector? Besides the export control of these two metals, does China have any other countermeasures? Now this topic is very hot on the internet, and everyone gets limited information, so I hope you can leave comments and share, so that more people can see different views. Okay, now let's get started. Through this export control, even those who know nothing about semiconductors are beginning to know the importance of gallium and germanium to the chip industry under the overwhelming media coverage. Gallium and germanium are important materials for semiconductors and key elements for chip manufacturing. Among them, gallium nitride GAN, compounds can be used in LED displays for cell phones and computers, and are also widely used in lighting, power supply, communications and other fields. And germanium is mainly used in fiber optic communication, night vision goggles and solar cells on satellites. In addition, silicon germanium, CyGE, is an important semiconductor strain material, which can greatly improve the speed of transistors and has a wide range of applications in high-speed chips. It can be said that without germanium, there would have been no first semiconductor transistors and chips. Although silicon holds a well-deserved dominant position in semiconductor manufacturing, in reality modern chip manufacturing has long gone beyond silicon, half of the elements in the elemental cycle are already used in semiconductor manufacturing. There is a claim that in order to continue to advance Moore's law, mankind will exhaust all the elements in the periodic table of elements. Germanium, however, is an essential and important element in the semiconductor field and has been instrumental in the chip industry. In 1947, the first transistor invented by Bardeen, Bratton and Shockley at Bell Labs was made of germanium, the first human chip, invented by Kilby of Texas Instruments in 1958, was also made of germanium. In the periodic table, germanium belongs to the same group four elements as silicon, but germanium is located directly below silicon, with only one more electron layer than silicon. This determines that germanium has similar semiconductor properties to silicon and can be used as a switch and to amplify signals. In its pure form, germanium is a shiny metallic solid like silicon. However, germanium has a much lower melting point than silicon and is easier to melt and make into crystals. So early transistors were made from germanium. Research on germanium dates back to World War II when, in order to develop compact airborne radar, Benzel of Purdue University added some metallic tin to germanium making the germanium diode able to withstand high voltages and thus improving the reliability of the radar. Thereafter, Bell Labs was inspired by this and invented the first transistor with a high-voltage-resistant germanium crystal. But germanium is more electronically active and has properties that more closely resemble metals because of the extra layer of electrons. But this also led to a smaller forbidden band width of germanium, and if the temperature was higher than 70 degrees Celsius, the germanium transistor would not work properly. 
1954 till of Texas instruments soaked the germanium transistor in a radio into hot oil in a public demonstration, and the music in the radio stopped. From that point on, silicon transistors began to make their way into the history books. But this did not mean that germanium was swept away into the Museum of History. A new application for germanium was found, strain engineering, which could greatly increase the operating speed of transistors. On mainstream CMOS silicon transistors, the speed of electron movement gradually reached its limit as the transistor size shrank. Engineers doped silicon wafers with silicon germanium to make the surface strain, forcing the silicon atomic spacing wider so that electrons at the interface could travel at a faster rate, thus increasing the switching speed of the transistor, which has now become an essential mainstream technology in modern high-speed chips. Gallium is also indispensable in semiconductors. Gallium nitride and gallium arsenide are used in lighting, displays, optoelectronic devices, power devices, and communication devices. Gallium belongs to group 3 and is generally not used alone, but as compounds combined into gallium nitride and gallium arsenide, etc. These two compounds are direct semiconductors and can emit light directly. In 1962, MIT made the first infrared lead with gallium arsenide and General Electric made the first infrared semiconductor laser with gallium arsenide three months later. Since then, GAAS semiconductors have made a big splash, and based on this, CD machines with infrared lasers were born. As for gallium nitride, it was not favored from 1970s to 1990s, until Japan's Shuji Nakamura invented the first practical blue lead with gallium nitride in 1993. With blue LED, it can be used for color display with the previously developed red and yellow LEDs to form three primary colors, which makes ultra-thin TVs and monitors possible. Due to the highest frequency of blue light, the development of blue LED is the most difficult. Ordinary gallium arsenide cannot send blue light, only gallium nitride can do. In addition, with blue LED, coated with some powder can be made into white light lighting LED. The luminous flux per watt of LED lamp is 20 times that of incandescent lamp, not only brighter, but also greatly reduces energy consumption, thus gallium nitride's blue LED has triggered a new generation of lighting revolution. The industry finally woke up and turned to the research of gallium nitride, adding other elements to it to create blue lasers and so on, which led to the later Blu-ray disc player. Gallium nitride has also been applied beyond the field of optoelectronics to the field of power supply such as fast charging for cell phones and laptops, and wireless communication, due to the excellent power conversion efficiency of GAN, it can achieve higher charging power in the same volume or have smaller size in the same charging power. GAN charger is the best choice for fast switching charger now. In addition, GAN has great advantages in wireless communication. GAN RF power amplifier, PA, has faster switching speed for higher bandwidth data transmission. Gallium nitride is one of the main semiconductor materials in 5G communication. In driverless cars, LiDAR is needed to quickly scan the surrounding objects and environment to generate electronic maps. The switching speed of GAN field effect transistor is 10 times faster than traditional MOS transistor, which makes LiDAR have faster response speed and better image resolution. As we broadly analyzed earlier, since gallium and germanium are the most essential semiconductor manufacturing elements, and China is the largest producer of gallium and germanium. A reduction in Chinese exports in the short term could mean higher prices in the market, but, in any case, gallium and germanium are niche. Materials compared to silicon. How small is this market in the end? To show you some data, China will only produce 430 tons of gallium in 2021, which is an exaggeration of more than 90% of global production. Germanium is similar, China supplies 68.5% of the world's germanium in 2021, and global germanium production in that year is only about 130 tons in total. In contrast, China produced 2.6 million tons of silicon in 2021. Therefore, the market demand for gallium and germanium is not large at all, so does it make sense for China to restrict exports with so much fanfare now? Of course it makes sense for the reasons we have analyzed before, so we can't look at production and market alone to explain the importance of the materials. On the contrary, they are both even somewhat indispensable in specific areas. The United States has been protecting germanium as a defense reserve resource since 1984, and in recent years has basically stopped mining germanium, all in the grip of the big guy's resources. The US government released the 2022 list of minerals critical to US national security. 
gallium and germanium are on it, but what many people do not know is that in addition to gallium and germanium, China also holds many aces in the upper reaches of the chip industry chain. So what else is in China's hands? I will briefly talk about it today, and if you are interested, we will analyze it in detail in the next issue. The first is antimony. The substrate is the underlying material for all semiconductor chips in the entire next-generation semiconductor chain. In this system, antimony occupies a central position, and it has an irreplaceable advantage in developing low volume, lightweight, low power consumption and low cost devices. So who is the world's largest producer of antimony? China. According to statistics, the global antimony resource reserves are about 2 million tons, of which China has the richest antimony resources, occupying 24% of the total global reserves. For example, Lingxuejiang City in Hune Province, China, has the world's largest antimony mine, with reserves of 300,000 tons, one mine is enough for the world's chip industry. If China also included antimony in the control, then the world's chip industry will again suffer a huge shock. By the way, besides China, there is another country that can also provide antimony, this country is Russia. The second is Indium.in the field of semiconductors, Indium is used in two ways. One is for packaging. The other is as a target material. In terms of Indium reserves, China is the absolute king, and the data shows that China's Indium resource reserves account for 72.7% of the global Indium resource reserves. At present, most of the indium exported by China is sold to Japan for the production of ITO targets, and the two big companies, JX Nippon Mining and Mitsui Mining, occupy almost the global market share of ITO targets. The third is platinum. Platinum is not considered a semiconductor material at the beginning. China generally used to make steel, the production of platinum steel is mainly used to manufacture boilers and turbines. But later, scientists discovered that the molecular structure of the elemental material is two-dimensional, so it produces extremely thin chips is an excellent semiconductor material. China is also the richest country in the world in terms of platinum resources, and the deposits are large and mostly suitable for open-pit mining, where the cost of mining is very low. I feel the situation is getting more and more complicated. But no matter what. We all know that sanctions and countermeasures are just means, not ends. Where things will eventually go, we keep a close eye on. That's all I have to share for today, see you next time.